So in this chart, so we have the change in developing pattern that is, uh, starts with, you know, a low fertility, this is scan kind of um, toothpaste, um, um, very dry, it, it keeps their form, their shape. And later, because the estrogen, as you see here, so this is, um, this is the estrogen. So estrogen goes up, yes, five days, six days before the LH peak. And it starts going up and up. And every day, as you see, measuring these um, in women, every day they produce a little more. And when they have the maximum, it goes down. And this maximum is the one that kicks the search of the LH. Okay, and this is using the Primon app. Here is the peak of LH, yes. Here is the BBT that confirm that there's a rising temperature that is related with ovulation. And you see here all these days that are the ones with should be estrogen being produced, allows the LH to kick and you should be start feeling these days before wet or a changing in your sensation and what you see. Okay, can I review, um, repeat back what you said there and just what you've talked about a little bit? I'm trying to get like the full picture of the cervical mucus cycle. So you're gonna start with the dry, um, which may become sticky. Um, and then how early before you ovulate can you start seeing peak Cervical mucus, the question I had. It would be two days or three days before your peak in LH. Okay, and even before your peak. peak. Yes, yeah, peak. And your oh, peak birthday. mucus is the last day of a slippery sensation or wetness. So in this, in this picture, this is the slippery kind of sensation, rope a white type mucus. And this is the day that it was the highest amount of estrogen and it was the last day of a slippery sensation because estrogen went down and kicked the LH. So if you see this is zero, this is the day of ovulation. So we count in this example where it was two days or three days, you see, before ovulation. So it means two or three days or one day before LH peak. But here you start feel, you start seeing this change in developing pattern of the mucus from moist to wet to slippery. Hmm? Okay, so it's two you or feel, three days. Yes, at least two or three days. It could be okay. five days before because the sperm can live five days in the mucus. So you're and then on your actual ovulation day, what here. what's typical? what would you be experiencing? The ovulation day, you will have the rising temperature and you will have a dramatic change. You don't feel oh, sleepy right. anymore or you just feel like, wow, how it happened? Yesterday I was like wet, wet and today I just have a little bit. How that happened? Yeah. Like you say, I was going to doctor because I have a lot of secretions. I didn't know what is happened the day. They, oh, I'm fine. That's like that. Day and night. That's okay, what we call peak of mucus. So those are these two things that we need to differentiate. So the peak of mucus, that this last day of a slippery, it could be, as you see here, two or three days before your LH peak. Mm. So that's the reason that if you're timing intercourse, we know that this is the peak of fertility when the LH is at the peak, because this is the day that in 24 hours the egg is going to be released. That's when you need to catch that egg with a very good sperm. But three days before, if you're doing it by the slippery sensation, you have more days here to continue timing intercourse. Right, because you don't want to quit when you're dry. That's no. I'm gathering from you. you no. Keep going. No. Yes, <laughs> you keep going for two days. And in those two days dry, maybe you see the peak of LH. So you need to use all that window. So it's very important to differentiate between a peak mucus and an LH, a peak of LH. It's totally different. They are, they are not at the same time. Sorry, Terry. Good to use, it's good to use the cervical mucus tracking with the ovulation test tracking so you can compare. And you have more days for timing your intercourse. 
and you will make sure that the sperm will survive because that's what you want. You want that in your body, you nourish and you allow the sperm to be transferred with the best mucus. This mucus even is a macro picture. You can see that there are tunnels for swimming. Yes, so this is the one. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so it's gonna be dry, it's gonna get wet, then you're gonna have your ovulation, it's gonna be suddenly dry again, and then with that rise of estrogen you showed after ovulation, there's a potential wetness a little bit after ovulation. That's kind of yes. the full potential cycle. Yes. Well, everything's different, right? So there's yes. a little different. Is, is, yes, yeah. so we need to get this clear for women that what is the pucus, the, the peak mucus, and what is the LH peak? Mm -hmm. okay. They're yeah. close, but not quite the same. No, it could be sometimes <laughs> just, you know, they are perfect in match, but every woman is different. It's like a fingerprint. My pattern this month could be not the next pattern next month. That's important okay. too. Yes. So it's yes. different between cycles, not just yes. between them. Yes, 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 between different cycles. And uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Because we leave the cycle as we end it. And we start the cycle as menstruation. So it's like a brand new start. Yeah. But we, it's a pattern, like, like, like the cycles of the moon, it's, it's a pattern. In nature, what we see is patterns, the pattern of the zebras, the pattern of giraffe. Everything in nature repeats in our cycle resembles like the cycles of the moon. 28, 31 days. 